Hi everyone, I'm Hannah. Welcome to my allotment for this week's vlog. I've got potatoes growing, I'm picking pea shoots and rockets, and it's all starting to happen now. Oh, what a gorgeous evening. I mean, it's not sunny, but it's completely still. The birds are singing their heads off, and we've had torrential rain all day, so it's really, really, really lush. But yeah, it's lovely to sit down here, actually, this evening. But I've had a busy week and I haven't got as much done as I wanted to. The grass is growing ever taller. I know it's no mow May, but um, when you have slugs and you're in a field, <laughs> you sort of need to keep the grass short, at least around your beds. And I haven't been able to do that, so yeah. Hoping to get that done at the weekend though, so we'll see if it ever stops raining. <laughs> it's so easy this time of year to to become overwhelmed with everything I needs doing but I did take a step back today and just think about it will all get sorted in the end and I know it's not the end of the world if I can't find space for everything I want to grow or if the seedlings die in the greenhouse instead of getting planted up you know it's not the end of the world you know I have a life I have a job and all those things need to sort of come before the allotment I'm afraid so you know I just decided not to beat myself up about it but just to remember the days of summer and how lovely it is just to sit and enjoy and I will still have plenty of veg to harvest that I have grown myself and that is you know the wonderful thing about it so yeah I am feeling overwhelmed but I'm okay with it and I accept it and I know that this is completely normal <laughs> right let's get into the vlog and see what I got up to here I did manage to repot some of my chili peppers so they have been in their small pots since they were pricked out back in when was that March potentially uh yeah so they have been in those small smaller than nine centimeter pots since then and chilies like to be constrained but it was becoming a problem now because there's some of them are so tall and they're starting to produce fruit and uh, the main issue was keeping them watered i am not a great waterer i rarely over water i'm more likely an underwater uh, <laughs> so things um, are put through the hard school when they're growing at my place um, and usually that's good for the plants and it is quite good for the chilies but it was becoming too much and um, a lot of them were like really sad between watering so I had to repot them even though my plan was to put them straight into the beds but it's just been too cold I haven't been able to do that I'm gonna grow as many as I can straight into the greenhouse beds in the little greenhouse but seeing as the the cold temperatures are what they are it just wasn't gonna be possible so repotting it was and I was shocked shocked at the state of the roots so this is probably also uh, the reason why they were struggling with the watering so the fungus nut problem I had earlier has, looks like it has resolved but the consequence of it has been that a lot of the the root development of these chilies have been very very poor so a lot of instead of having that nice root ball in the pots there are very few roots and less of the smaller finer network which means that they are less able to take on water as well so it's a bit of a um, a double whammy there partly I don't water enough or triple whammy <laughs> I don't water enough they're in too small a pot and their um, root system isn't there to take on enough water so I've given them new pots and larger pots with more nutrient rich compost as well as more perlite more vermiculite so they will be quite happy in there and they are growing again now so and they are actually quite happy in the greenhouse can you believe it so i i took them all out apart from i have still have one tray of chilies and one tray of aubergines inside my house but all the other chilies and peppers are inside the little greenhouse um, using the paraffin heater just to bring it up a few degrees and it's been working really well I've been managing to keep it mostly above 10 degrees in there at night with the extra fleece layer that I showed you in the last vlog right so 
they've actually been doing well alongside with the tomatoes. Chilies are more sensitive than tomatoes and aubergines are more sensitive than chili plants. So that's why I've done it that way. So the tomatoes went in first, then the chilies and then uh, the aubergines could definitely go in now. I just haven't had the time to do it. They will need repotting as well but they should all be happy in there and much happier than being under my grow lights that are not as good as the sunlight is at the moment. It's better than the sunlight in winter but it's not better than the sunlight now so as soon as I can get that done they will move out there. So this year I'm growing edible lupins which is a new one for me and they <laughs> they produce a flower stalk with the seed pods just like a normal lupin would but it has um, slightly larger pods with beans in it than that you can eat so it's um, similar to a broad bean I, I think in that way um, there are other edible lupins that are very very bitter apparently and needs a lot a lot of preparation but supposedly this variety called dieta is sweet or not bitter at least. I sowed six seeds, five germinated, and they are the cutest things. I mean, lupins are cute anyway. Um, but yeah, when I repotted them, they were even cuter because now they're getting a little bit big. But So I'm tempted to grow them in the flower border because um, they should have nice flowers as well. So it's exciting. I am growing normal lupins too, so <laughs> hopefully they look different enough. I won't confuse them. And speaking of beans, some broad beans, I had to tie up my broad beans again. The Aqua Dolce Long Pods that I sowed in autumn have now grown very tall, very quick with the increase in warmth and the increase in rain, definitely the rain, and they have stormed up and needed quite a lot more support. The beans are setting. I have not yet seen any black fly. I keep checking the tops to see if there are any flies that have landed. So the black fly come in and they land in the top growth, the top fresh lush growth of the broad bean is what pulls them in. And then from there, they colonize the whole plant and especially get out your beans. So that's something you don't want. So black fly will be around at some point in spring where you are. You, we do sow broad beans in autumn so that we can get them to as large a stage as possible with as many beans developed as possible before they arrive. That's part of the the gamble that you take. They might die if we have a really harsh winter, but if they don't, then you get an early start and early harvest and you're more likely to avoid black fly. I have also sown in spring and they're much further behind, though they are starting to flower too and I do need to keep an eye on them as well. So the best way to avoid black fly taking your harvest of broad beans is to snip out the top of the broad bean plant, right? And that is very straightforward. You just take the top 10 centimeters off and you can eat that bit. I like to just uh, fry it in a pan with some butter and serve it with salt. This is really, really tasty. The time to do it is between the first beans are forming at the bottom of the plant and the black fly arriving. So either you can be proactive and take the tops off as soon as you see the beans are forming or you can wait, if you can check them often enough, you can wait until you see the black fly there and it's usually they arrive on one or two and you snip them off, don't eat those, they can go on a compost, but the other ones then take all the other tops off and no more black fly should arrive. I have ants crawling all over my bean plants, which I have ants everywhere. Uh, so that is an indicator that they might be arriving soon. And the idea is that you want your plants to grow as tall as possible to produce as many bean pods as possible before you take the tops off. Because when you take the top off, you then stop the plant growing taller and forces it to con to concentrate on producing the beans, right? But if the plant is too short when that happens, you're not gonna get as many beans, if you see what I mean. So it's that's one of the positives with autumn sown. Sown beans that they get taller before then you need to take the tops off. So your harvest should be also be larger on those, depending a little bit on the winter weather. But anyway, if you're proactive, you should be able to steal back your beans from any black fly that wanna take them from you. So I, I really like turnips and they're so easy to grow in spring and also into autumn. So this spring, because it was so cold, right? I, uh, I've heard a lot of people say that they're so really late. 
And I have sewn four varieties and three of them have done really well and some are even ready for harvesting. The Milan White are ready for harvesting. I like to eat them when they're this size. Um, and I realized why one row is not doing so well. So to cover that bed, I was using two pieces of fleece that had to be overlapping. So those three rows are doing well. Had double fleece on since planting out in March. So March, April, they had double fleece on. And that made that much of a difference because the weather's been so cold. Isn't that amazing? So that's led to those being much further ahead and, um, comparing to other people on, I don't know, on Instagram, I'm harvesting my turnips earlier. So that's a trick for you for next year. If you can double fleece your spring, so spring plantings and uh, they'll get a better start. If again, we have a cold spring, of course, but it just goes to show how big a temperature difference fleas can make. So in the last vlog, I sowed, finally sowed all my squash, my winter squash, my summer squash, the rest of my cucumbers, cucamelon, a chocha or a choca, and half of them have appeared the achosha both appeared i think in one of the cucumelons some of the cucumber but they have actually been the poorest and most of the winter squash i've been managing to pot up so it was again quite disappointed with germination this year i don't know what it is about this year it's just quite poor germination on most things i'm still holding out hope though for some of them i had to dig around and they're not rotting or anything but anyway as i was sowing them in those small modules i had to pop them out and plant them up as soon as they had appeared otherwise they will quickly outgrow those little modules i am of the opinion that you can plant your squash deep when you pot them on but only I guess because I am an underwaterer I don't overwater my plants because I basically don't have time so so once I've potted them up and planted them deep and firmed them in I put them in put the pot in a tray of water to soak up from the bottom but I also water from the top to let the compost sink down and settle. But after that, I do not water from the top unless I can stand there and watch it drain. Like I don't just pour it into, so I, I, I prefer to put the whole pot in a tray of water and water it that way. And if I do it that way, then I don't get the rotting of the stem that is otherwise the risk when you bury the stem deeper in the pot. So if you have leggy seedlings, do this carefully. Be very careful though because that fleshy stem on the squash and the cucumbers can be very very sensitive so be very careful when you do it. And I actually saw on one of my cucumbers that I sowed, my greenhouse cucumber Passandra F1 that I sowed in mid-April that at the bottom close to the pot it had started producing roots, air, like <laughs> aerial roots probably because I underwater so it was producing roots to look for more water so that indicates that you can plant them deeper and they will form roots along the stem also I broke my one of my squash plants off last year just above the soil level and I popped that in a glass of water and it formed roots so they have that ability just like tomatoes but just not as readily but it does work one of the new additions this year is my perennial bed so this is along the edge of my original bed area and i've covered some of it uh, the no dig way where i cover it with plastic so first you put a layer of of cardboard double cardboard on top of the turf and then some organic matter and then cover that with with black plastic so this piece where i planted the tonton dean i covered in november last year and as you can see there's already turf dying off so the turf is not surviving there's some bindweed still there so you can tell that the weeds underneath there are still alive if the roots are white that means they've still got life in them if they're dark or brown or gray they're they're dying or dead right so i knew the bindweed wasn't gonna be killed by now um but what i've done is I've planted, dug a hole through the turf, the cardboard has disintegrated by now, and I planted the Taunton Dean perennial kale there. And then around it, I mulched thickly with homemade compost, and then I recovered it, cut a little hole for the plant and recovered it with the plastic that was there to keep mulching it for as long as possible. And it's gonna need mulching for preferably a year to kill off 
that bindweed and if not a year then at least through the summer months when uh, when the growing season is for perennial weeds. So Taunton Dean is a perennial kale which grows to the size of a small tree right so that's I've put in a support next to it. Uh, just a stake just to tie it to if it starts to flop about so it can become quite um, a wind catch I think so that's why I've put that there so I can try to support it. I'm not sure whether I need to cover it to protect it from pigeons. I don't need know if I need to cover it to protect it from the butterfly slider or if I can just use the um, the spray that you put on the the BT or oh, what's it called now I'm gonna have to put it in in the text and I don't know about whitefly or the grey mealy bug aphid that loves brassicas you know so I will see how it goes this year. It's so small at the moment the pigeons could just like decimate it and uh, I don't want that of course so I'm keeping an eye on it so far so good and we'll see what happens. And then one morning I came down so every evening I go to the plot to secure the little greenhouse or my little hot house right so it's bubble wrapped for the chilies and the tomatoes and now also all the squash did I say that I moved all the squash to the greenhouse anyway all the squash and the cucumbers and the melons and all of them are also in the greenhouse together with them with the, all the rest so it's quite crowded in there anyway so to keep it warm it's bubble wrapped and I used the paraffin heater and I used the fleece right so I light the paraffin heater and then I fleece it and I cover the door and then I leave so I did not check but the window had got stuck uh, had come out of its um, hinge or its slot that holds it in place at the top and with the automatic opener it just wasn't closing properly so that was open all night but even so the temperature in there managed to stay at 7.5 compared to the big greenhouse where I'm at now uh, where it got down to 3.5 so it still was okay so that was the temperature measured under the fleece covering so they were fine and actually last night I did not put the fleece on and they're still fine because it, it, it wasn't as cold last night, right? But yeah, it's getting super busy in there and I thought uh, I'd show you around and see what's what. Right, let's, let's get over there. So while we walk over there, I thought I'd ask you to like this video if you're finding it entertaining or if you're learning something because it really tells me that I'm doing something right or if I need to change something up, so yes. Right, let's get into this uh, greenhouse tour. Right, I better zoom you out, I think. Here we are, it's um, holding up the bubble wrap and uh, all the plants are in here. I've actually got some dahlias that I need to put up. But yes, here we are. So. The squash, some of the squash are doing all right. Some of them came out of the seed capsule, really damaged, like they were stuck in the seed capsule. This is blue banana, but it was, uh, you know, it's still growing, but it just doesn't look very pretty. Not as pretty as um, this one, for example. You know, some of them are just gorgeous. This Galeuse de Zigny, they're so huge already. They grow so fast. Which is why I don't sow them until <laughs> until end of April or May. But yes, so these are the some of the chilies that still need to be potted on. Um, but I'm not keeping all of them, so I don't want to waste my time if I'm not doing that. And I haven't really decided how many I've got space for. But these down here are potted on. And they are doing really well actually in here. Um, got some flowers coming and some fruit coming already so that's good they've been liking it in here and I, I was really worried. Not all of them are as pretty. This one apple crisp is doing this curling thing. I have two of these plants and they're both doing it and I have been doing it for a while it's not that they started doing it since I moved them out. They're just been like this since they were like yay high so I don't know if this is normal for apple crisp chili <laughs> uh, if someone's growing it let me know but otherwise the loofah are in here as well and they're starting to climb up a bit more there's some discoloration if I can find something well maybe not on that one but <laughs> oh yeah over here some discoloration on this one for example and I don't know if that is sun scorch or 
something else. So it's on the lower leaves and we'll see what happens. I mean, I have too many here anyway. This is four. All right. And I'm probably only gonna keep max two. And I have two that are looking good. So, you know. And then all my tomatoes, right? <laughs> I have a lot of tomatoes and uh, a lot of them were exposed to sun scorch, right? Uh, so I think this, oh, this is a tray of sun scorched ones. Uh, but they are now all growing to the point where I can't tell which ones are the ones I sowed later. Um, they are now all growing and putting on so much growth. Tomatoes are just amazing. So I am now inundated and I'm going to have to start culling them at some point and quite soon. Oh, just touching them just makes it that release that smell, you know, it's gorgeous. Um, some of my favorites is probably these uh, lemon sherbets, super excited about. These ones had sun scorch, but they are persevering. I did lose a few, but not, not enough, maybe I should say. And these are my pretty squash, super cute. And also, um, this is the, oh, this is Crown Prince. But, uh, oh yes, this is Pacific Giant Pumpkin. So I'm pretty excited about that one. We'll see how big it gets. Uh, what's not been super happy though is the basil. I think about 50% have survived, sadly. Uh, but it's still, I mean, there's still plenty. <laughs> there's probably still plenty there. Uh, but you feel like you have to, you feel like you have to sow more. And here's a little cucumber melon. Cute. I don't actually know where the achocha is though. And yep, the melons are doing okay out here too. And uh, yeah, more tomatoes. Tomatoes everywhere. Let's see if I can find the achocha. Ooh. Must be down here then. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so they just look like all the other squash at the moment. Maybe more like a cucumber. We'll see. Oh, okay. Right. So currently it's been with the door open. It's 14.5 degrees in here. So it's been overcast all day, but you're gonna have to get used to it. Oh. Right, so yes, I uh, need to secure this up here again, but um, yeah, what a mess. What a mess, but it's working, so I don't really care. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. I will see you next week.